Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Marcos Garcia. I'm going to be the, mod the moderator of this um, roundtable about uh, enhancing uh, civic engagement in the digital era. Uh, in the uh, last years, the um, smart city narrative has evolved quite a lot. And uh, some years ago, we could um, listen to a discourse about uh, smart city as a closed system uh, of technologies that uh, was able to provide uh, new services and make the city more efficient. But lately, in the recent years, uh, citizens have been put at the center of the discourse, and now we cannot imagine a smart city discourse without uh, thinking of, um, of, of the citizens, not just as uh, the users of these services, but as active actors that may be able to change uh, the cities they are living in uh, and in collaboration with other citizens. Uh, develop their own capabilities in projects that uh, benefit the common good. Uh, we are going to, uh, to talk about how the new tools and the new formats that the uh, uh, digital era is um, providing may, may or may not uh, enhance uh, civic um, engagement in the cities. And uh, we have um, Three, um, um, three participants, three, three speakers uh, that come from different uh, backgrounds, different um, um, uh, contexts. Uh, we have uh, Galaping, who is councillor of participation and dis districts at, at Barcelona City Council. Uh, then uh, I would present um, Pablo Sarrias, uh, who is uh, Open Seneca CEO and founder, and finally Angelica and Angelica Alvaray, Angelica Alvaray, uh, who is the founder and president of City Viva. Um, the first one to uh, present is going to be Gala. Hola. Hello. I think we have a presentation. Can we show it? So we have eight minutes. Okay, I will, I try to be fast. So um, we think that people are demanding more and better democracy, and in so far that technology is a tool, we have to adapt this tool and to develop the tools to respond to answer to the citizens' demanded. So I'm gonna try to explain very brief and very short. Uh, the platform that is in Barcelona, which is the participatory platform that we have developed in the city council. First of all, um, I'm gonna talk to you about the principles of the city in Barcelona, which are, we're talking about a platform that is, that is open to collaboration, that is free to deploy, use, copy, and improve. You can also see the code of the theme in GitHub. So we are talking uh, that we have a, a federal GPL v3 uh, license for code, Creative Commons by ESA for content, open access dat database license for data. And this means that we made a platform that is auditable, collaborative, trustworthy, and democratic. The other principle is transparency, traceability, and integrity. All the content is accessible, um, it's downloadable, and traceable, and not, man not manipulable. Um, so we try to make also a platform with democratic warranties, quality warranties. It means that um, it doesn't discriminate um, anyone. It offers equal opportunities for all users and proposals. Ah, okay. Vale, perfecto. Wait, sorry. Yep, here we are. Um, yeah, and also the principle of privacy. Personal data is never provided to third parties. Users, users control data and notification preferences. So the current uh, features that the CDM has now, and that we develop this, the current year, this year, 
was first we develop uh, the theme in order to improve our strategic planning. So it's open proposals. I invite you to also to visit the webpage, the theme.barcelona. Uh, you can see open proposals, make open proposals and receive support. Uh, we also had family meetings and this is important what we when we developed the CDM, we also thought that technology is a tool, so we have to mix presential, physical meetings and also digital participation. Uh, we, had, we developed the CDM so that you could have open debates with representative data visualization, deliberative commons and social network integration. And in October 2016, we changed, we modified the CDM in order to adapt it to our current necessities, so we have a new design or uh, and user experience. We have more participatory process configurator, so it means that every district or every city council area is able to adapt the decision to its needs, to the participatory process it, it's developing in the, in, in the mo at the moment. <coughs> and also well, with this uh, multi-component and multi-scale um, process. And the coming features that we are developing or that we are working in for the CDM, um, be able to rewrite the code, the code with engines, modular and scalable, uh, multi-tenancy, open budgeting, geolocalized proposals, which in a city is important in order to know where are the people that are participating may more and where we have this um, digital bridge in order to work with them. Um, Survive and ballot and result, result visualization, service delivery to the whole city, not just city council. It means that also the city plat the citizens platforms will be able to use the platform to to put the proposals and the participatory process on the proposals, and the team will be able to include the direct democracy all the citizens initiatives. And in October 2017, we want uh, the team to be able to to offer you secure voting, and has user experience and gamification. It means also that we improve in the CDM every time that we use it, and also um, collecting all the citizens' proposals to improve the CDM. Uh, collaborative software integration, integration with digital identity, real-time collective intelligence. It means the CDM provides you the opportunity to have a collective debate, not only to make my proposal or to give my opinion also to give to have this collective debate to have a global vision of what you are debating about and science po for policy integration so a uh, little a small view overview <coughs> of what this um, um strategic planning uh, suppose the pro the big process that we made this year through the CD. we were talk I will I won't give you all the numbers that you can see in the in the presentations, what we are talking about, more or less 40,000 people participating, 50,000 um, in presentials, in physical meetings, but the, la but the others in, in a virtual way. Also, you could, you could participate in physical meetings and uh, in the, the CDM. And this traceability, the, the fact that the CDM gives you the opportunity to know where, is a pro where does a proposal come from, what what has been the debate uh, concerning this proposal, and if it's been refused or accepted by the city council, it improved also the people that joined the CDM after we ended the, the process. So, um, and actually, one of the good points, or the positive, well, here you can see, this is the data visualization. You can see all the users that were interacting with the city council or between them in the during the process, there's the different uh, proposals, no, uh, by theme by the themes that they, and this is all the physical meetings, the offline meetings that we had in the in the proposal. So now we have adapted the theme, so you can find different participatory processes that are taking place at the at the city. Well, we have now the six ones. Uh, we are working on digital and participatory budget, which means you have also these physical meetings, but also the way uh, the, the opportunity to participate uh, through the CDM and to know 
And this gives us also the opportunity to answer to one of the demands of citizens that was, we want to have all the information. We want to have a place where the, where the particip participatory process is transparency. So it's transparent. So it means you have all the information here. You can ha have also debates here. You can see the proposals that have been done in the physical meetings. You can make new proposals. Well, this is one of the process. Um, this is one of the, uh, well, you can see how this uh, strategic plan was developed. You can see here um, if it was accepted or not, this, and who, well, who proposes it, and so on. But so, um, we wanted to make the process of developing the CDIM also with the philosophy of how we think that participation has to be done in a in a moment where people are demanding, how I said before, more and better democracy. So the theme has not been done just by one corporate corporation. We have next week, we start with Meta the theme, which is a, a open participatory design for of functionalities. We're building also an ecosystem community with associations, universities, small and medium-sized companies that are working around the city in Barcelona. We're building also a, de a democratic citizens lab, a permanent space for citizens of, for social innovation and improvement and open development of the city in Barcelona. We have also this research plan no? um, with universities and research centers and citizens to improve democratic quality and deliver participatory science for policy. Um, and we are trying also, well, we are extending also the theme. We have a lot of demands of other cities that want to work with the theme, and actually it was built with, was developed with open and free software in order to have this mentality, to have this collaboration process with other municipalities. Not, not competition, but collaboration with other, with other citizens that we think that they have the, actually the same challenges that we have as citizens to answer to these uh, citizens. Um, to answer to this citizens' demand. So, um, in the base, yes, that we think we need free, open, and secure digital infrastructure for democratic commons. We have to go beyond the smart city, no? We are witnessing an increased dependency for of the pub public sector on private corporation, corporation digital infrastructures. Does this that not means that big corporations have to work with the public administrations that but but we have to own in a public way and manage in a w public way way the digital infrastructures that we develop and that we pay with public money actually um so it has to help us to regain sovereignty and guarantee citizens digital rights public common democratic infrastructures are required for that so the city in barcelona aims at becoming the new socio political network of federated municipalities boosting democratic participation based on free open source software, transparency, integrity, and data protection principles. And this concerns what I was saying before, un minuto, uh, beyond the smart city, no, the which is the future of democratic cities. Uh, we think that democratic democracy is smart. It's not only a political system, it's also the structure of a distributed cognitive system, which means having equal opportunities, deliberation, collective consensus, and also transparency. Smart cities at the moment have a deep uh, democratic deficit, and actually, actually is that um, a lot of models of smart city governments rely on data and technology infrastructures controlled and owned by big corporations, and this comes to what I was saying before, that this not, does not mean that uh, we have to work with corporations, but that corporations have to know that we have, public administration have to manage the data and the infrastructure. So we think that the city, the future of smart city uh, concerns having more democracy, and that means open infrastructures, participatory decision making, collective intelligence, data protection, sovereignty and equity, and that, what, that is what we are trying to do with the city in Barcelona. Um, I invite you also to follow it on Twitter, at the city BCN. And well, actually, that's all. I hope we will have 
time for the debate later. Pablo, uh, please. Uh, uh, Pablo is going to present uh, Open Seneca. Hello. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, my, my voice is not the best today, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to, to resist all this time. So I'm, I'm not going to talk uh, about uh, our roadmap or our products. I don't know if we're going to have the presentation up at some point. Um, I'm uh, Paolo Sares. I'm the CEO of uh, Open Seneca. And we are here uh, at the Smart City Expo presenting uh, CV City. That is our next uh, generation uh, solution uh, that comes after 20 years of working on the democratic space and uh, working in over 40 countries all over the world in electoral processes and citizen participation. And I want to talk to you about uh, in enhancing civic engagement. Yeah? So if you want to know about our product, you will have to come to our booth. Yeah, I, you will not see a, a single slide about it. But uh, so far, you cannot see even any slide because it's not there. OK, now, good. So. Following up from the previous presentation, the, the, there was one thing that uh, it was uh, very interesting for me. Yes, you, you could see that it was saying that it was around 39,000 uh, people that had participated in the Decidim Barcelona uh, platform. And if you look at Barcelona as a city, yeah, uh, that has what 1.5 million people, yeah. Yeah, so the, the percentage uh, is low. And this is not something that happens in Barcelona. This is something that happens uh, every, everywhere. Yeah? So my presentation uh, here today is about that. Yeah? First, let's define what is uh, success. Yeah? Then look at why we think uh, uh, civil engagement is not uh, successful, and then how to address that to, to make it more successful. So if we look at the participation rates in uh, civic engagement, uh, participatory democracy initiatives around the world, in most cases, it's 1% to 5% uh, the, the engagement that uh, it's, a, uh, it's achieved. Yeah? And, and this, is, this is poor. And uh, when somebody gets uh, 5%, it's like, wow, this is a big success. But it's not. Yeah? So if we uh, want to, to live in a, in a democratic world, we need to get people engaged and participating. So accepting these low percentages is something that we need to strive to change. This, is, this cannot continue. And as I said, we have been working on this space for over uh, 20 years with governments all over the world. And when we were performing elections, we saw the participation rates were higher or lower, but they were in the normal ranges for, for elections. But in participatory democracy projects, they, they, they were low. And a couple of years ago, we... we we started thinking, okay, there's something here that's wrong. Let's, let's try to see what uh, can be done. Why is this happening? Yeah? And we started, we started studying the different initiatives, uh, not only ours, but uh, many initiatives that, that were done all over the world. And uh, we uh, came to a model where we uh, identified what we thought were the main reasons why uh, civic engagement is not successful. Yeah? And there were three groups of, of, of reasons. Yeah? Some of the reasons were political, some they were operational, and some they were social. And the, the important thing here is that not uh, all reasons were present on, on each process, but a subset of them were, were present in most processes that were making that, that at overall, most processes were being, uh, ha and ending having very low participation because of different reasons. Yeah? And I, I'm going to uh, cover some, some, of, some of them. So political reasons that uh, are uh, helping or are making citizens not uh, participate is uh, uh, our citizen engagement projects where they are driven by a political entity that is very interested in that, but that, uh, that participation is not uh, really interesting for the citizens. They, they see it as a... Uh, as interesting for the mayor or for the, the city hall, but not addressing their, their, their problems. Yeah? 
continuity. This is very important, yeah? So uh, city does uh, some engagement, and then that's it. It's a drop in the ocean. There is no continuity. Participation grows when there is continuity, when there is one project and the other and the other and the other. And this is something that the city in Barcelona is doing very well. It's, 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 it's con uh, generating a, a, a continuous flow of, of activities that are making uh, people and, and participation increase over time. Yeah, this is something we, we are seeing all, all over the world when there is continuity from each project to the next, uh, there is uh, normally a, a growth in participation between 7 10%. So if you do, if you, if you do it uh, many times regularly, at the end you may end up having a good participation. Yeah? The not sincere, yeah, that's some, also, so something very interesting as well. Yeah? Some, uh, sometimes uh, participation uh, processes are done just because uh, somebody wants to be in the picture, yeah? but they don't really care what the citizens uh, think. And citizens are not stupid, they understand that, and then they don't participate because they, they, they know there's uh, nothing for them in, in, the, in that process. Nice one. Wrong question. If you ask the wrong question to the, your citizens and at the wrong time, yeah, that's not uh, going to help. Yeah? So you may end up uh, having a boomerang uh, uh, participatory experience that you will never forget. Yeah? So that's, uh, that's very important. You need to understand what to ask when. And in order to do that, there is uh, some preliminary work that needs to be done uh, before launching a, a process. And uh, you, you, you need to, to make things uh, happen at, at, the, at the right time. Yeah? So these are the main political reasons we identified what, that we're making participation rates uh, go low. If you go to the operational ones, the wrong tools. Yeah? I, I always uh, put a, an, a, an example here. Yeah? We, we were hired to, to do a project in, in Africa, in a country I will not name now here. But they, uh, they asked us for a very beautiful citizen engagement platform that we deployed uh, to them. And in two years, they, they did not get 3% uh, participation. They got three participants. Yeah? So this is a disaster. But they, they, they were having a, a nice uh, web interface uh, in, in a place where there was no internet. Yeah? So uh, that's, it's, it's, it's a wrong tool. It, it, does, it doesn't work. Yeah? The uh, well, unprepared teams. Uh, sorry, the, the text is a bit small. Yeah? These uh, projects are very, very difficult. Yeah? So we've been doing these things for 20 years, and uh, it's still a challenge every, every time. So you need a team that is focused on that from the city hall, and uh, in, uh, in uh, companies, uh, consultancy firms, uh, you, you need to get a team prepared for what's coming on. These projects are not, not easy. Yeah? They, are, they are very complex. They need a uh, budget. Yeah? So these things are not free. You can have a GPL software, free software, but you still you will need people to run it, servers to run it. If you are doing things properly where you have uh, both online and offline things, you will have to print papers, uh, rent uh, space, uh, unless uh, you are uh, a city where it already has uh, premises, but still it has some costs. So you, you need to be prepared to, to cover the, the, those costs. And then maintenance, yeah, because that comes with the continuity. If you uh, have a project that uh, is continually evolving, you need to maintain it and, and keep it up to date. And this means that uh, every second day there is a new uh, hole in software that is found and you need to patch the systems and, uh, and, and keep things uh, running. It's not, not easy. And then you have the, the social problems. When you start doing uh, online uh, projects uh, and participatory things, you, one thing you face are robots and uh, problems with authentication. Yeah. You have fear. Yeah, you have fear from the participants that there will be a repercussion if they give their, their opinions, yeah, that uh, somebody may, may go against them. The relevance, yeah. Why would I participate in this if nobody's participating and uh, nobody cares uh, about what I'm uh, going to be saying and the city will do whatever they want anyway afterwards? Yeah, and the, the impact is related to that. And then the moderation. Moderation is another uh, key, key aspect. When you are starting a, a participatory uh, project, you need to give the city the, the right to moderate the conversation. And this doesn't mean censorship, it means moderate, because uh, otherwise the, the discussions can get uh, sometimes uh, pretty, pretty ugly. Yeah? Of course, if you want to have moderation and uh, not censorship, you have to give the, the citizens the ability to audit what the city has moderated in a, in a, in a secure way. So that contents that are moderated are moderated because of uh, 
not being inappropriate uh, threats, uh, publicity, things like that, but not because of, of political ideas. Yeah? So with all of that, we are presenting here what the, our next generation of solutions are, that are solutions that are built to address all these uh, problems. No, they are not addressed to, to, to solve all these problems. I don't think, uh, yeah. Because there are some things that we cannot address. We cannot address uh, with a technology that uh, the, the city will follow up on the, the decisions of the, cities, the, of the citizens. We cannot uh, ensure the impact. Yeah? We cannot ensure the, the city is being sincere about the processes. Yeah? But we can uh, provide a, a platform that is independent, open source, auditable, to ensure that there is not a top-down approach, that there is continuity, that there are no robots, uh, there's authentication, there all these kind of things we can, we can solve. And after being 20 years doing this, uh, we know we are doing it as uh, good as possible with the latest technology, uh, state-of-the-art technology. And also we are uh, today launching as well our new academy to help cities learn from the experiences all over the world to, so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel and they, ca they can uh, try to, to, to go in, in, in a direction that will make their lives uh, hopefully easier than if they had to start from, from scratch. And that's my speech right now. So uh, there was one more. Well, was one. Uh, let's see, one more. Yeah. So our company uh, name is OpenSenic. As I say, our product that we are launching today is CV City. We are at the center uh, corridor close to the restaurant, so you, you cannot miss it if you are hungry at any moment. So. Thank you very much, Pablo. Uh, next speaker is uh, Angelica Alvaray, who is going to talk about the experience with a uh, uh, civic engagement platform called City Viva. Well, thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, I'm going to um, talk about our experience. Uh, City Viva is a, is a, a digital platform for c uh, citizen participation. And we, were, uh, we launched it last year in Montevideo as a pilot run so that we learned about uh, the civic engagement uh, uh, conduct of people, what they did, what did they didn't do, and uh, uh, the results we got are more or less what uh, everybody has explained here, so we have a lot of coincidence and th some of findings that I will show you. Okay, when, when we come to, to citizen engagement, everybody is at a disadvantage. So uh, we, it affects all of us. If we are citizens, uh, we, we uh, don't participate, then things are not going to get better. It affects all. No? Um, we have, uh, we think and we, uh, uh, that uh, citizen participation is the key in this uh, smart city movement and that we have to face some challenges that are beyond uh, technology so that it, it, it means the, uh, uh, it's about the people, how they act, it's a culture of participation that we have to act on. Okay. I'm going to stand up because I can't see. <laughs> okay. Uh, the traditional methods of participation, as, as we said, the monitoring, uh, reporting, participatory budgets, and uh, the social networks, okay? Oh, thank you. Uh, these are, uh, there are a good no number of uh, new technologies, products uh, that you can see, and all of them address uh, some small parts of the participation process. But uh, there is none that, uh, that have, uh, not, not necessarily have had uh, a mass uh, volume of participation, as uh, uh, Pablo was saying uh, before. You know? It is a small percentage of people that are participating, so we have to act on that. All, we have a lot of, one of the things is a very complex process because we have a lot of actors. You know? We have uh, uh, from the citizen, the people in the city that are different ages, these different interests. And then we have li uh, city leaders, like uh, they come, the, the journalists, professionals, uh, public service companies, NGOs, uh, institutions and regulations, and the government. So, so there are many, many stakeholders with many different interests, so making them participate is something very complex and very difficult. 
So we have a, a, this, like, a, put our ideas in a model that uh, I wanted to go through that. No, we think that participation, uh, civ civic engagement, uh, has uh, like two axes. One is uh, people go from uh, getting informed and getting information on what's going in the city, going on, and to act. That's the, the smallest uh, uh, way of participating is at least to read about what's happening and to act about it, to do something about it. And then we have uh, less participation and mass participation. No, we have like these two axes. And we can then build uh, and, and see uh, all the uh, different forms of participation where they are at in this model. Okay, report claims, which has, uh, is, is, has uh, less participation and uh, it's more an action thing that, that you complain but you actually go and file a claim is something that you are acting on and it's very difficult for people to go and do that because there are many barriers to doing it. You, we have the participatory budget processes which are um, m modern but also uh, uh, they are also presential like and uh, now is they're starting to be online but uh, it's very difficult to participate if you are working if you are a working mother or a professional uh, you can't go and participate and say look we, we want this or want that then we have this the monitoring and auditing systems so that we can know what's happening and if it's uh, transparent and it's done well that's also a, a very difficult process to participate in if you are an engaged citizen and, it, and, and uh, you can only have information about what's going on. And the mass participation we have right now is the social network, uh, uh, of course, the, the, the social groups that we have, we can see them everywhere in different specific things like, for example, well, we have, of course, the, the, the usual ones that is Facebook, Facebook and Twitter and uh, uh, WhatsApp and uh, um, uh, LinkedIn. But we have also small uh, specific things like, for example, City Cop, or we have uh, something for security or something for uh, making uh, eco, uh, ecosystems or things like that. Okay. So uh, the barriers are different be, uh, de depending on where we are at. No, if, if we are at the action, mm, there is lack of information for people, there is pessimism on, get, on getting actual results, resistance from city governments to, to hear what people are saying, and, uh, and resistance from service companies to be evaluated. No, there is also... Uh, it's not only that uh, citizens do not participate, it's sometimes that people don't want to hear what people want to say. Uh, there is also a difficulty to uh, generating audiences in, in the auditing systems. And also uh, something that Pablo mentioned, why should I participate if nobody hears? if nobody is going to do anything about, about it. So how do we get people motivated to participate if we, they don't see continuity, if they don't see that it, it is worth it? It is worth my time, it is worth my effort. The largest barrier of participation we found is the pessimistic expectation of institu that institutions will respond, no? Is, is exactly that what we found uh, when we started to do this, this work. Okay, so uh, uh, we um, envisage uh, the uh, civic participation process uh, in stages. We think that people for participating, they have to first be aware, so there is an awareness stage, then there is a participation stage where, okay, more than awareness is I give my opinion, yes, I like this, I don't like, and that is a, a, another stage. And then the action is the, like the third final stage of civic participation. We have to acknowledge that this is, uh, this is the process so that we can act on that and really get more people into this process. People are not usually aware of their rights and their opportunity to participate. So uh, that's why uh, we think it is a small percentage of participation uh, in, in many of the, of the processes. So we have to act on that uh, as, a, uh, as a process. 
So that's how we envisage the, the we, we think that uh, participation for uh, enhancement of quality of life in the cities has to, has to come first from the awareness that we can do something about it, the inf getting the information, and then the awareness and, and, and the, 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 uh, uh, an easy way and easy tools to be able to participate and to act and uh, solve things. Okay, in, uh, we found in, the, in our pilot run in Montevideo that people are less aware than we thought on, uh, on the city issues that they could participate. So when we put City Viva, which was um, an action platform actually, it, it was very difficult because we had a gap between what people thought they could do and what they actually could do and uh, in, in the same, uh, uh, solving something for the city. Okay, okay. so see, here's the list of findings. I'll, I'll go quickly. People are not aware of their rights. They don't have time. Ordinary citizens, as I said, they, we are always running for looking for time, so it's very difficult to participate. People stick to traditional face-to-face -face participation. It's easier for them. Uh, they are usually curious when there's something different, but they don't have too much time to learn about that. And the citizen feedback is not always welcome, no? So we think that to achieve citizen engagement, one of the most important challenges is to uh, educate uh, people on citizen engagement, and that can be done uh, uh, using the good technologies and also in, in presential uh, uh, meetings and things. It's also import important to lower the barriers of uh, using technology, but in, in the Latin American countries, you cannot always use uh, technology. As you said, for example, in Africa, Latin America is the same. You have a, a, a good educated people in technology, but you have a large uh, mass of people that don't have access yet to the technology, and that has to be solved. No? The greater the awareness, the greater the participation, that's what we think, and that's what we found out. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Angelica. Um, I'm going to see if there, is, there are some uh, questions in the app. I forgot to mention that uh, you can download this um, Ask and Vote app and make questions online. But also you can make questions here uh, if you have some. Yeah, over there and over there. Are there no microphones or? No, I don't know. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask you, um, I, as I see it, when we try to make some um, engagement with the citizens, the main problem was that when, first of all, when they give you an ID or a thing that they have a problem about, they feel as if they gave you the problem and now it's yours. So I would like if you can to say what do you think about it because I think that the most problematic thing is that when we come, even if we are sincere, there is still a problem about not everything going to be solved, but and although we try to make lower expectations, um, that not everything would be so. And, and then it, it becomes like something that they are... Uh, disappointed about and doesn't continue coming. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, because of the, when we start talking with the citizens, okay, it becomes like a battle, like you said. And as you know, uh, from the political side, I mean, it's today, it's better to talk with uh, one by one, not making it, you know, all the medias, Facebook and everything has done not good for the uh, talk with the citizens. So I would be very glad if you can. Uh, 
Hi, um, I missed the first uh, lecture, but um, I was listening uh, to you. Um, Can you present yourself when you start talking? So yeah. Just to know who you are. Um, I'll make it short. Uh, my name is uh, Tzvi Weinstein. I'm from Israel. Um, for the last, let's say, nearly 40 years, I was in charge of a national project called uh, Project Renewal of Disadvantaged Neighborhoods. But uh, our first principle was citizen participation. And um, I know by heart all the difficulties and conflicts that you uh, mentioned. But um, what I did is um, to ask the political level of the local municipality um, to leave aside the ego and the politics and to take the interests of the citizens in the neighborhood as the main project. And it took me quite uh, time to pursue them. And uh, what I did is to um, create what I called um, interested groups of citizens, which are divided into many, many topics from childhood through physical aspect, uh, environmental, elderly people, healthcare, education, whatever. And to this, uh, let's say, uh, subcommittees, many citizens that have something to do with the question of education of their children or transportation or whatever, they uh, created like a vision of what they want from their neighbor to be. And they apply to the local municipality and slowly, slowly, uh, most of the, their uh, demands were filled. It takes time, you need budget, this uh, project that I'm telling you about is a national one. So most of the budget comes from government or sometimes from um, what I did, the uh, partnerships between the business sector and the community. Um, you presented something on the level of the city. I would suggest to start from little project neighborhoods. You have less um, people there and you can, I think, persuade them as you mentioned, the education uh, point, because this is the start point, otherwise it will not work. And of course, the awareness. I guess that the people you are talking about have many uh, social, environmental, poverty, whatever issues. But I think um, if people will understand from top down and from bottom up that they can meet on a milky way and uh, solve the problems that will be one of uh, your solutions. Thank you. I think there are a couple of more questions. I would ask you to uh, be brief. Okay, very uh, short. Um, <coughs> I mean the, uh, the city in Barcelona development team and uh, we are curious to know, provided the topic was engagement, how could people uh, engage if one of the identified problems is trust and if the code or the programs that are running uh, to articulate democracy are not open access, we cannot be, cannot be audited, how could people trust your platforms? Uh, and well, this is the question. Okay, there is another question over there. And then uh, I, would read, I, I would like to read uh, some of the questions in the application. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. My name is Luigi Ceccaroni. I'm, uh, uh, I'm the CEO of uh, One Million One Labs. Uh, I'm a member of the board of the European Citizen Science Association and the trustee for, Sp for Spain uh, in Greenpeace International. My, my question is for the representative of the uh, City Council of Barcelona. As we, as we have seen uh, in, your, in your numbers, the participation in, uh, in the platform, the CDIM.Barcelona, uh, represents about 2% uh, uh, of the population. And uh, as we have seen in the following uh, presentation, this is uh, in the range of 1% to 5% that we usually find uh, in similar initiatives uh, around the world. So my question is, uh, um, because your presentation was mainly about uh, the technology improvement of the platform, and this is fantastic because also I think this 
platform is really a, one of the best uh, actually available. But what is uh, quantitative, quantitatively the objective of the city of Barcelona in terms of participation? Because uh, the low participation in this kind of democracy is always the main uh, a weak point. Uh, all the criticism goes towards uh, the fact that uh, a very small number of people are deciding for a large number of citizens. So w what is your concrete uh, quanti quantitative objective, if you have one? Okay, thank you. I'm going to go through the questions that have been asked in the, in the application very quickly. Uh, one uh, is for you, Gala, is uh, in a multicultural city as Barcelona with a lot of mi migrants and languages, why the theme is only in Spanish and Catalan? Um, what is your opinion about open space technologies? Open space technologies, this the kind of new formats of encounter uh, uh, that we have now from free culture and internet. Uh, the third question is what balance should be found between representative democracy, city council members, and the total citizen participation? Then uh, how do you encourage participation? Should we incentivize the engagement process? Share your experience, please. And then uh, the last one is, which is more important, quality of feedback or quantity of, engage, of engaged citizens? Okay, so now you can go through these questions and answer Quite some of them. <laughs> Quite you want to start, you want me to start? So, um, okay, I will try to be brief. I think we have two minutes each. So, first of all, th three things. I think when we talk about participation, I was talking about actually about technology of the city, but when we talk about participation, I think there's one thing that is very important, that it's inequality in the cities, and this concerns not only digital bridge, it concerns a lot of other things. If you have a, um, a problem with your housing rights, you won't be concerning about participating in anything because you, you are concerned, you're worried about your and not losing your house. So I think there is also a difference between quantity and quality, and we want uh, quality processes. Uh, it means also that you have to have a multi-lawyer process. I, I will come on uh, later. Um, and there's another thing uh, that for us is very important now. 80% of the participatory processes that you have in most of the cities, at least in Spain, are proposed by the city councils, by the administration, and just 20% are proposed by citizens. So I think our goal, our challenge, is to change this uh, proportion. And we want citizens to propose the participatory processes. We want administration to hear, to listen, what citizens are proposing, and then, uh, I mean, if someone complains or has a punctual problem, it's not participation. It's your obligation as ad public administration to listen to them and to try to solve the problem, but it's not participation. I mean, we need the liberation processes and we need also processes where you, where you just have to go and vote so that people with some kind of profiles, it's more easy for them to participate just voting than just deliver than if you have to deliberate. You have to have these different um, kinds of processes, but just uh, giving a, an answer to a concrete complaint or demand uh, for me is not participation. So um, just uh, three thi three things. Um, the question concerning multiculturality, uh, I prefer to talk about uh, interculturality. Uh, it's true, and actually it's not only about languages, it's also about cultural c categories, which is something that we have to improve in the next years. We, c we can work on having different languages in, in the city, and actually in the development of the strategic plan, what we did is having um, campaigns in different languages in Facebook, which was very useful but we have also to think with other categories. It's not only think, uh, changing the, the language. And we actually, in the participatory counselor, we are, uh, we are working on this diverse uh, participation. Um, and this proportion between representative, participa representative democracy, participation, city government members, I think we have to work to work, and we, our goal is co-producing public policies thinking that if you involve citizens in the production of public policies, they will be more equal and they will be 
uh, with more quality. But that means also that you have to choose where you start the pilots and which policies you start to, to involve. And I think, ooh. <laughs> okay. So let me uh, first address the, I think it was a, a direct question w without uh, being said uh, about the uh, closed source, no, yours and, and his as well, yeah. Closed source, open source, yeah. I mean, uh, people trust uh, closed source software all the time because uh, you, you, get, you get into an airplane and there's closed software running that airplane and the air traffic control system and your car and you have the elevators. and uh, So you are trusting a uh, closed source software all the day. Uh, the, in, in some other parts of your life, you, you prefer not to have a closed source software. But it's, what is making you uh, trust software is not the disclosure or not. It's that the, you expect that the, the right controls have been put on top of the software, the right verifications. Yep, so that uh, it's behaving as it was designed for. And that's why uh, closed software can be audited. Uh, once uh, that said, uh, our company has uh, always published the, 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 the code. And uh, it's, uh, maybe you have not found it, but uh, we have always uh, published the code. And we have not published the, the code of the new platform uh, yet, but we will. Yeah? So that's, uh, that's uh, something different. There's also another distinction between open source and free software. That uh, the, the fact that you publish your code doesn't mean that you have to give it uh, free for everybody to use it. And that's uh, another di distinguish distinction. That's why there are so many g kinds of uh, open source uh, licenses out there. So that was one direct question. Going to the interesting one uh, about not getting uh, bullied by the, by the process. Yeah? The, it's very important that uh, when you start one of these processes, you set up the roles of engagement from the beginning. So you have to set the expectations right for the citizens. So if you are just uh, receiving ideas from the citizens, they will expect that uh, they will tell you something and you will do something about it. Yes? So when you s start a process, you have to set your steps from the beginning, inform that, OK, we are going to be uh, listening. Then we will have a panel of experts look o over it. Then we may have a consultation or an or a idea gathering on how to solve some of the things. So bringing back the control and the, the, the providing of answers to the citizens as well. Because otherwise, uh, you just get more and more work on your, on your shoulders, and, and that's, uh, that's not good. The other thing that is very important is moderation, yeah? because otherwise the conversation uh, can, can get nasty. And for moderation, the best thing is to get the citizens to moderate themselves. So if you ensure authentication of the, of the people participating and you allow other citizens to flag uh, inappropriate content, uh, the conversation gets uh, civilized very quickly. Yeah? Because uh, inappropriate content that is flagged by several citizens can be uh, moderated out, and then you have a, a place where you can see uh, audit what has been moderated out so that uh, you cannot have one uh, set of citizens that all belong to a political party moderating out the comments from the others, yeah, because it's uh, that, that, that scene. But setting up the, the rules of engagement from the beginning, a clear process that gives you the option to get back to them so that it's not, you present something and there's immediate reaction. So there's, uh, you present something, then there is the liberation, then there is maybe a second step. So, and and that, that's, that's uh, an important uh, Hello. thing. Hello, yeah, I'm sorry. 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 But uh, I hope we have some time, yeah. still some time, yeah. for Angelica to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a bad thing to be in the last. No, no, it's okay. Because you, you, you already said many things that I wanted to say uh, to you. And uh, I, I just wanted to stress that in City Viva, we, we actually we addressed uh, the, the, the citizen, uh, citizen engagement through the neighborhoods, as you said. Uh, it is, it's very important not only to, to get the, to the people uh, in their everyday needs and everyday uh, problems they have and, and then offer a, a, a process, a, def a definite process on how to do things, but also a, there is a, another thing that we didn't address, but we think it's very important, is to, to, uh, for uh, young people to, to, to um, care about the city, because usually uh, young people are, are, have other interests. And so how to you poor people uh, that 
they are uh, naturally engaged in, in the in the technological uh, tools and everything. So how can we bring in them to engage in what is happening in the city? I think that is the, the real challenge because, and, and, and that is the, the medium term challenge we have to face, and we have to like make them uh, ma made the, um, processes for them to to participate and and vote and and uh, be part of of what is happening. That is something I had. Thank you very much, Angelica, Pablo, Gala. Thank you all. Uh, I think, um, yeah, to make just a summary, uh, I think uh, we are taking the first steps for something that uh, we believe is really important. And I think um, uh, there are some uh, great experiments going on nowadays. And uh, I think we have to see them as um, learning context that will provide a lot of information what is coming in the future. So uh, let's see what, what happens in the next years. Thank you very much.